This is Sandy Lemke from FreeWebsiteTutorials.com. Today we're going to learn how to build a web page template in Photoshop that repeats with the length of your page. This is just an example of what I'm talking about, a very simple one that I built and I'm going to show you in Photoshop exactly how I built this. But first what I want to do is take you through a PowerPoint uh, show just to kind of give you an idea at a high level of what I'm going to be doing with you in Photoshop. So first thing, um, the first thing that you're going to need to do if you want to build something like this is you've got to find some artwork that you can use. If you're not that great in Photoshop to where you can build something fancy like this on, you know, from the ground up, the easiest thing to do is to just go find some images. So what I did was I went and I found a piece of unfinished wood molding. This is my first image, and my second image is simply a gold picture frame that's got kind of an, an ornate um, border on it. So that's what the, the first thing you got to do is find your find your artwork. Then the wood molding piece that I found was only 250 pixels wide. So I had to copy and duplicate that and I had to do some work on the artwork to kind of smooth it out. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Then I chose to just use that same artwork in the footer. So I just copied it and duplicated it. I'm sorry, duplicated it and then I rotated it so that it was upside down for my footer. The next thing I did was I used that picture frame that I showed you and I pulled that in and laid it on top of the molding and I'm using that for my content area. Found a couple little scroll decorations that you can find in Photoshop and then I just put some text, my website name and my footer information. After I did that, I picked a color out of the frame using the eyedropper tool and then I dumped color on either side of my content holder using the paint bucket tool. These are all tools in Photoshop. And then the last thing I did was I picked, or I used the Photoshop tool, slice tool, sorry, and I sliced my image into three slices, three horizontal slices, so that I end up with something that looks like this. Three GIF images, there's the top of my template, there's the middle, and there's the bottom. The reason why you want those three separate images is because when you come into your HTML document, I know you can't see the details of this, but this is a table. You can get my exact code for this off of my website, and I'll have a link to it at the end of this video, but it's just a table that's got three rows. The first row holds the top uh, slice that we made, which just has the header in it. The middle uh, row of your table holds the content as well as the, back grading, the, the, repeat, the repeating background HTML code is here, as well as the middle slice and this bottom one is just the bottom slice that we made, the bottom GIF image. So let's get into Photoshop. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can because I only have 10 minutes on this video. The first thing you want to do is create a blank document that is the width of your web page um, that you want to create. So in my case I wanted to create one that was 950 pixels wide and I did 600 pixels uh, in height the height really isn't that critical because it's going to repeat down the page. The main reason you pick a height in this case is just so that you have enough room to work when you're building the web page. I find that 600 pixels wide or high is enough. The second blank document that you're going to create is the same width as your web page. So in my case this is also 950 pixels wide. But the main purpose of this one is just to work on my um, artwork. I find that this little process that I'm going to show you makes it a lot easier Rather than trying to pull artwork in here and fix your artwork here, I fix it on a separate template and then I move my artwork in. So let's get started with this wood molding. What you need to do is pull this over here and you notice that this is only 250 pixels wide. I need to copy and paste this across so it's 950 pixels. So all you do is right click over here, duplicate layer, and now I've got two. And then I'm going to do it again, duplicate layer, I've got three. One more time I should have enough to cover it. I've got four. Okay, first thing you want to do here now is you want to go layer, flatten image. That's the very first thing I do. The second thing I do is I want to get rid of that white space around it. So I'm going to use my crop tool and I'm just going to crop out that white that's underneath because all I want is my artwork at this point. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'll, once I get it flattened so that it's only down to one layer over here, it makes it real easy for me just to move it over. I'm going to use my move tool, move it into position. Now, if you have the kind of artwork that I had, you're, it's very likely that you're going to be able to see these seams where you, where you put those pieces together. 
What you can do is, first of all, we don't need this stuff anymore, so let me get this out of the way because I want to make this bigger so you can see what I'm doing here. So let's just get this guy a little bit bigger. Okay, you know, you can obviously see that there's some seams in here. What I do with that is I just use the smudge tool. So over here, smudge tool, and then very gently, you're going to have to take some time to get this right, but if you very, if you just click and very gently move your mouse, you can get this to blend in good enough for our purposes. This is not perfect artwork um, like some graphic designers have to do. This is just trying to blend this in a little bit. And you see where I'm going with this. If I had more time to spend on this, I could get those seams worked out. You just want to be careful because if you, if you move too much, you're going to end up distorting your image like this. You don't want that, obviously. But anyway, you can use the smudge tool to, to, to smooth that out if you have that situation. Then what I want to do is I want to go Edit, Transform. Um, oh, sorry, i got to do one more thing first. got to copy my layer because I need a layer. Duplicate the layer. I need a layer for my bottom. So now I've got two of these guys. Now I can go Edit, Transform, Rotate. In my case, I wanted to use the same artwork for the bottom as I did for the top and I want to upside down. I just like the way that looks. If you get it close, by the way, you can hold down your shift key and let go and it will get it into position for you. Now all you got to do is move your use your move tool, tool and move it down. Okay, so that looks pretty good with the exception of my little demonstration here on the smudge tool. That's, obviously that wouldn't be there. Now the next step is to move in the frame. So all you got to do is click on it, grab it, move it in, and now obviously that's the wrong size. So you can use edit, Okay, transform. This time we want scale. So we can go like this, you know, to try to not distort it. You can use the corner ones and then just get it to the size you think you want. And then use your move tool to move it in position. I just lined it up with somewhere. That's about the right size right there. Um, maybe a little bit bigger up here. But whatever, you get it to the size that you want it. And then just use your move your your arrow keys to get into position. I'm sure that there is a more precise way to do this. The graphic designers probably know the precise way to place this, but I just use my arrow keys and that's good enough for me. Next step would be use your text tool, get some text in here. Maybe you want your um, if you this is for a newsletter, uh, some kind of an ebook you're selling or whatever. Maybe you want your title up here. If it's just for a regular website, maybe you want your website name up here. Whatever, put your text up here. If you want to add some fancy scroll work or whatever, under here, custom shape tool, there's the scroll that I use or the spiral. Um, you know, there's all kinds of them in there that you can look. I just put a few spirals in there to fancy it up. So once I got to this point, the next step was to um, pick a color because I, you could have white on either side if you wanted to, but I wanted to have a color. So I went with my eyedropper tool and I just picked a color out of this frame. And you'll notice that it brings it over here. Whatever, pick whatever color you want. Maybe you want a green or a tan, whatever. Get the color and then just go paint, fuck it, and dump it. Oops. This is exactly what you do when you make a mistake. You don't want to do that. You need to go back. And the what I did wrong was I had layer two highlighted. I needed to highlight the background before I did my paint bucket. There we go. Okay, so that's basically how you do it. Now the next step was I have to get my slices in here, right? Because I need to end up with three separate slice slices for my images. So slice tool, when I click on that, I want to make sure I have fixed size because I want exact proportions for my size. And I think I told you that the width or the height of this is 600. So I'm going to do 950 by 250 is going to be my first slice. 250 is going to be my bottom slice, and then 100 is going to be my middle slice. And I'm going to do that by specifying proportions up here. So all you have to do is, once you get your proportions in there, just click in the upper corner and just move slightly and see what happens. It'll snap into position with you when you or for you when you let go. Now it's got the second one. It's asking you, okay, what do you want to do for the second one? So now I'm going to change this up here to 100. I'm going to do the same thing, click here and just slightly grab it and then let go. There's my, and now it's asking me for my third one. This one I'm going to make the same size as the top one, 250. Grab onto it, move slightly, there we go. Now, now we just have to save our slices to the web as three separate GIF images and then add them to our HTML code. Remember you can get all of this code at freewebsitetutorials.com.